how do you pronounce uh, the name and uh, where did this name come from? Okay, so uh, the name pronunciation is Diti Ingenieri. Two words, first is kids and the second like of engineers. Uh, and yeah, so this name comes from the time when we were nameless. We only had a few songs at the time. And one of those songs was like with exact, exactly the same names. It's like the kids of engineers. And uh, this was a song that I wrote about like literally people like me. And uh, I, I am a kid of two engineers and uh, like all my life. I, and when I grew up, I saw many, many people like me. It's not like literally engineers. It, it, it's just uh, people from, I don't know, regular families with no social boosters, etc. Like uh, people who had to um, get everything in their life on their own, if you know what I mean. Like uh, people who had to fight through life. You mentioned like the early days of the band. Uh, when and how did the band actually get together and what were like the the original ideas behind the music? Okay, uh, so first, like a little bit of history. Uh, I used to play in a band in my student years. It was like 2010, 2009. And uh, uh, I gathered those people to rejoin nine years after so in early 2020 i asked few people that i trust and i love uh, to try to get some our garage punk rock uh, together and uh, they, they agreed and we were looking for a vocalist so luckily for me i was at the new year's party and he, like the most of people were the friends that i closely know like no a lot of time and uh, there was just few couples that i barely know and i know that like they're friends of my friends and uh, we were singing like different songs and i know it was like a bluetooth uh, like bluetooth uh, stereo and, and they're playing like some hits uh, and uh, all my friends including me we sing uh, quite terribly so uh, and there was this uh, lady who were singing amazingly good, and I was, uh, and since since I I know music, uh, at least uh, at some way, because I don't have any musical education, and this is common for many other members. Um, I mean, I, I'm still having some kind of musical ear, and I was like, who who's doing that? Who's singing that well? And uh, turns out that this uh, lady, her name is uh, Sasha, and uh, she uh, she was doing singing since she was three years old. So, um, and luckily for us, she was not in any, like, not in any uh, kind of band or, I don't know, or any place that she could sing, but she loves it. And uh, I think it was like a perfect match. So she, we, we recommended this place for her to sing with like, um, let's say minimal, minimum requirements and uh, no commitments at that time and funny story is that at the first time when when we agreed for the, our first rehearsal to try to try out everything uh, she was not very willing to attend so uh, her ex-boyfriend were saying like come on you can go try once if you don't like it don't don't come, come back ever and if you like it like it, it's a great thing and, and she tried to be honest i don't think she liked it a lot because we were very very uh, rusty at the time because it was like nine years since we were last playing in a band etc um and uh, it was like really this dirty punk rock let's say in in terms of sound and uh, but uh, what what is great thing about our band we are really really i would say it in non in a very humble way like we are really nice people uh, I mean, I, I, I love these people. I, I know why I love them. And, and we are just great collective. And I think this is what kept us together at the time. And uh, yeah. And four years came by and now we are kind of famous in Ukraine. You mentioned the punk rock a couple of times, but how would you describe your music the moment in your own words? And where do you draw inspiration? 
to be honest, I do not love to describe music uh, using genres because um, sometimes it sometimes I don't really care about those just because there is some there is just music that I like and music that I don't like and there have different genres and uh, what what I can say is what I was listening to a lot in my life and what probably made the most impact on me in terms of like band names and uh, things started when I found a cassette of Offspring, the Offspring band, uh, because my father was like, a, I don't know, metal head, let's call it like this. He had uh, like two huge bags with cassettes and uh, I was like trying to listen to, to, to some stuff. I know Nirvana was way too hard for me at the time, and uh, some other bands are just too old for me at the time, you know, like ACDC or Led Zeppelin. Uh, so I found Osprey, and it was just a perfect match for me. Uh, and I gained a lot of, I don't know, life inspiration from Osprey. That later was, uh, it had a great addition of Linkin Park. And I, I think I, I listened to like, thousands of bands during my life because mu I, I love music that's that, that's what i did in my student years i was just like trying to find new music trying to explore different genres listening like i don't know hours and hours and hours of different music uh, to understand what i like what i don't like and uh, somehow it uh, created my own you know music style and uh, which is once again it's mostly inspired by this you know catchy and kind of, I, I wanted to say something good about Offspring, but Offspring is not just a punk rock band because there is, I know, a lot. Um, but for me, Offspring was especially good in their first half of their career because they were kind of aggressive and depressive at the same time while being inspirational. I don't know how, it's, how it works, uh, but yeah. And uh, what I do is like all my songwriting is probably probably inherited by bands that I love. How do you bring all this music uh, into the live performances? Like how important are gigs for you? Oh, it's a, it's a long story, actually. But uh, first of all, talking about uh, live performances, I have the biggest imposter syndrome ever. Because um, I even I know that at the time when we just started our gigs, we were already very, very popular in Ukraine. Um, and the funny thing is that our first gig was after two years of our first activity, because we started at 2020 at the just the beginning of COVID. And there was like no opportunity for us to, to try out the stage in Ukraine. And then it translated into the war in Ukraine. And um, yeah, it's it, it was a really tough times, and only during the war we were, we started gaining popularity, and we had our first gig since three years of activity, and the gig was amazingly huge. Like uh, there is a big big uh, music festival called uh, Fine Misto. It's literally like fine city. Uh, in the translation and uh, they suggested for us a gig on the main stage simply because we are we, already we are a big name uh, in ukrainian rock music like new wave rock music and uh, yeah so for us it was something really huge because first of all it was like the biggest ukrainian stage possible at that time uh, probably not even at that time probably in, in general, uh, uh, it, it is it's like, you know, a big festival with, with a main stage. What, what could be bigger? I don't know. Um, and uh, also, I'm very, very lucky that uh, somehow I have a good stress management because I never did any big gigs previously. But what I know is like, I never, uh, were, I never was nervous during exams, during very important stuff. So, and it never, um, I think th this helped me to focus a lot on, on the performance. And, uh, as I told before, I'm not really a professional musician. I love music. I create stuff. 
I, I write lyrics, um, but I'm not a good performer as I would describe myself. I, I never consider myself as one until we started performing. And uh, I would say just like natural, it, it was a natural feeling because I was playing music that, uh, that I wrote and the music that I like, probably that's why. You have been uh, doing gigs uh, under the the Russian war. So how has the atmosphere been on those festivals and concerts? Yeah, so very important thing to understand, like from the perspective of uh, atmosphere, is that uh, all the gigs that are going on right now in Ukraine are either in a very safe place that has uh, bomb shelters and so on, uh, also, I have to mention that if there is an air alarm and we have this air alarm system on our phone that uh, kind of recognize the area that is under attack, and uh, when there is an alarm, the every venue stops. So we we, we says, tell people to go hide, and then if everything's okay, in thirty minutes, like they continue. Uh, and the third thing, very important, is that. Probably 99.9% of venues are um, like a crowdfunding for our military. So uh, we are using this possibility to to perform from for artists, for people to I know enjoy to relax a bit to I know to change the focus just for a second, but not to forget things that are happening, but uh, to continuously remember that there the only reason why we can gather as events is because some Ukrainian people died today protecting our freedom and freedom to do that. So this is uh, like the main focus of our gigs is um, fund fundraising. And uh, the first festival that I was talking about is um, probably for now, it's the only huge festival in Ukraine right now. And it's 100%, uh, like 100% of its funds are, are translated to, to military. Probably also like ninety percent of the bands are playing for free there. So uh, yeah, and I know it's probably kind of hard to imagine as well. And 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 I'm I want to say that I don't want anyone to imagine that ever. But that's what we that's what we have right now. Let's go back to the music. Uh, yeah. You released an EP that I also cannot pronounce, but uh, as I understand, it means OMG, one million Rivinias. Uh, so what's the story behind this EP and what are these five songs about? Uh, yeah, so this EP is called One Million uh, Rivinias. Uh, and this is the amount of uh, money that we raised during the recording of the album. Like, um, also, quick fact, is that... Um, Every our singles that were going on previously was also a part of fundraising. So we were like, uh, we will not release this until we buy a drone for our buddies in, in the army and, and so on. So, um, but some people were kind of pushing us in terms of like, hey, like, are you going to release an album? And uh, for some of people, of those people, I reply like, have you ever? How far ago did you listen to the full album from the start to the end? Because right now, you know, it's like um, um, like systematic of singles, which is pushed to the public. So especially in Spotify, and I kind of get it. I kind of use it a lot because um, I don't know for me, for me, it's, it's very handy. But um, as an experiment. We decided to try to create this EP. We wanted this to be a conceptual mini album, not just a, a several songs grouped, grouped together. So yeah, we uh, we started creating material, started recording that as well. And um, during that during that amount of time, we were raising money for for our for our friends in the army. And uh, by the end of it, we really, we really gained this one million of arenas. And uh, the funny part is that the abbreviation is OMG, 
for this. And also we have a, we have a song that is coincidentally had the same uh, the same uh, abbreviation. Uh, and this song is called uh, Abolon, Minska, Heroi Dnipra, which are three uh, stations of Ukrainian subway. Uh, that uh, it's kind of reflectional, nostalgic song about my uh, my uh, my like long way home every day as a routine, uh, like day after day. But it's like a nice feeling when you when you're going back home. Uh, yeah. So uh, it it contained five songs. Including our most uh, like the shortest one, which was which is the first one in the list, and the longest one, uh, yeah. And what's important, we also have song in the place number two, which is called Solidarity. Uh, actually, I, I wanted to bring a few words about that. So this song is uh, our, let's say, uh, like it's our our way to trying to say thank you to all our uh, friendly nations that are trying to support us in these really hard times. Yeah. Seems that you have been uh, quite productive uh, also this year because there's also the single life 2.0 if I'm if I'm not wrong. Yeah. What can you tell me about this song? Sure. So uh... <laughs> It's called 2.0 because it's the second version of the song. Because uh, the first one uh, was a part of our first EP, our first release. Uh, the only problem with that is that I was, while writing the song, I was inspired by a song by uh, Ruben Steiner, which is called uh, "Kebonita es la vida," uh, which means like uh, how be- how wonderful it, uh, life is with with you, contigo. Uh, and uh, this is the only l- lyric of this uh, song, and uh, I, I, l- I like the song a lot. And it was kind of my romantic way to—I t- I know I-, I was very inspired by my uh, like love life with my wife. Not not the love life, but just l- l- life. And I was trying uh, to write something about that, and uh, it came out in a way that I wanted to be—I wanted the verse to be in not the, not the native language. And somehow I choose Russian. Uh, uh, the, one lyric was uh, this, like, que bonita es la vida contigo. I, I choose the same one, but in Russian. And when the war started, I started hating that. Uh, so we decided to remove it from the platforms. And we created a new release. It was absolutely everything from music perspective, even, even though the chord progression is the same. It's like very very different. It's uh, so yeah. This is uh, this is how it's done. Yeah. Like you said, you have become uh, popular in the Ukraine rock scene in a very extraordinary times. First the pandemic and now the war. Uh, how do you see the future of the band? Oof. Uh, okay. So let me put it like this: that. Uh, the best answer is I do not know, because at this point I'm uh, really considering joining the army, and I'm I already finished the drone courses 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 uh, previously like FPV drones. Now I'm studying the other type of drones, and I really want to join uh, my other friends in the other uh, like military uh, division. So yeah, um, it's probably, I, I, I don't want to be too dramatic, but let's just say that I don't know how things will go. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I would love to say something for sure. And thanks for giving me the chance. So uh, I, I said some part of this, talking about this solidarity song before. And uh, the only thing that I uh, like want to share with people is that I'm it's I, I and all my friends and and my family and like the people also Ukrainian people I know we are extremely thankful for all the help that is provided to Ukraine right now and uh, yeah we are I know most people do not know the history of Ukraine but for many many centuries we are fighting for our freedom and for like for our existence and. Um, Probably it's just like our fate to to fight for that time over time, 
Um, but in this uh, in this war, we were really, I know, we were not really prepared for that. And uh, I think without the help from from outside, we will lose it in a very very hor- horrible way. So we are extremely thankful for for helping us and for believing in us. So yeah, I wanted to say to say thank you, people. <laughs> Редактор субтитров А.Семкин Корректор А.Егорова